there are many types of uh, leaves and out of this the leveraged uh, leaves and synthetic leaves are very important uh, nowadays because uh, it it is being acted as a financial service so uh, leveraged leaves and synthetic leaves are uh, very important leases that has been uh, undertaken by the uh, companies who needs finance what is a leverage lease a leverage lease is a lease agreement that is financed through the lesser with the help from a third party financial institution here the presence of a financial institution is very important and uh, there are two parties uh, here also this lease uh, lesser and lessee and the lesser purchased uh, the uh, equipments for the leases uh, with the help of a financial institution uh, uh, and in a leverage lease an asset is rented with the borrowed funds and this is a concept in which uh, the lesser purchase assets with the borrowed fund from the financial institution and it the particular equipment is uh, a lease uh, with the lessee and the concept is like this uh, the uh, the rental income received from the lessee has to be uh, used for uh, payment of uh, EMIs uh, for the loan taken for the purchase of assets. The system of leverage lease in which the lesser purchases the property with a V2 lease, uh, it by paying some amount uh, from his own pocket. Actually, the lesser uh, has already some amount uh, he financed. Uh, he, I mean, uh, he uh, spent that amount along with the financier or a bank. Uh, which has been acted as a third party and uh, uh, the, uh, also apart from his own money from his own pocket and he borrows the remaining amount required to purchase it from a lending institution like a bank so the property is mortgaged to the bank by the lesser so the property it is mortgaged till all the loan taken from the bank including interest thereon is repaid by the lesser uh, and it has been repaid with the help of the uh, rendered, uh, rental income received from the lessee periodically and the same amount is credited in the loan amount, loan account. This is a system of leverage leasing. So you know uh, the lesser uh, spend uh, his own money also he borrowed some funds from the bank and the lessee uh, and the equipment was purchased and the equipment uh, again uh, lease it back to the lessee and the lessee uh, uh, you know the lessee will pay the uh, uh, rental income periodically and this rental income was used by the lesser to uh, to repay the emis you know so this emi this system will continue till the uh, entire loan amount uh, is being settled a leverage leasing scenario the scenario or situation in which uh, the companies can go for uh, leverage leasing uh, leverage leasing involves borrowing funds to pay for the high cost of the assets value uh, and it has been used of course it has been used for the high uh, high cost asset values because the companies are not able to purchase it uh, purchase it because of the lack of uh, funds available so the company will think uh, whether to purchase or whether to lease uh, they can if they wanted to purchase again they have to borrow funds and it will be reflected in the balance sheet uh, as a liability the bank loan that will be affected that will be badly affected for the uh, maintenance of good uh, debt equity ratio that has been uh, washed by the shareholders and uh, other stakeholders of the company so uh, so the finance uh, the company uh, uh, take this uh, leverage lease as a financial service and it is used when an entity does not have the funds to buy the asset outright so it is used when when an entity does not have the funds to buy the assets outright nor do they necessarily want to keep the asset for a long term so this is situation a company an entity does not have the funds to buy the assets outright nor do they necessarily want to keep the asset for a long term so these two situations created a scenario in which a company can go for the leverage leasing so first situation is a company does not have the funds to buy the assets outright because the huge amount of funds uh, is needed to purchase the assets and the second one is 
uh, do they necessarily want to keep the asset for a long term? The company is not interested to keep the assets in a long term period because of uh, uh, the problem of obsolescence or uh, some new machine or um, uh, equipment will come up uh, future or new technology will come up future. So the company buying the asset will be uh, a bad decision uh, uh, in the scenario. So the company think of uh, leasing assets, I mean company using the leverage leasing scenario. A leverage lease allows a lessee to obtain a loan from for the leased assets value during the lease term and repay loan over the life of the lease. So you know the accounting standard is different from the operating and financial lease. Uh, accounting standard is different and the operating lease accounting procedures are different uh, in terms of the uh, accounting standard. Uh, procedures followed uh, for financial lease, uh, leverage lease, capital lease, etc. So, accounting standards require a business to differentiate and account for leased assets differently, depend on whether a lease is operating lease or a leverage or capital lease. So, if the company using operating lease, uh, the accounting procedure which is totally different from the company using uh, leverage lease. So as already mentioned, the leasing and financing is the two options available to the company. The company have to decide whether to finance uh, the asset or whether to lease the asset. So uh, leverage leasing and leverage financing. If uh, the company wanted to purchase the assets, it is called as leveraged financing. If the company wanted to uh, use the assets through leasing, it is called as leveraged leasing. So both are uh, both are. Uh, the decisions are to be taken by the company uh, uh, before usage of the assets. So whether to lease or whether to purchase. So the leverage leasing a leverage lease provides a loan that covers an estimated value of an, of an asset over the leasing la uh, time frame. So leverage financing is different. Uh, the buyer of the asset obtain a loan for the full value of the equipment and payments are created over a longer time frame for repaying the loan. So this is the difference between a leverage leasing and leverage financing. You know, both renting uh, and leasing is different. Uh, so we can look uh, how uh, the renting and leasing are different. So of course, rent is a recurring payment of tenancy uh, and generally rent is paid on monthly or quarterly basis. Generally, the duration of the uh, rent uh, could be 1 to 11 months. Post 11 months, rent agreement is, be, is to be renewed with the mutual concern of landlord and tenant. If the landlord is not, uh, I mean, uh, not uh, uh, interested to continue the uh, rental agreement, uh, the, the, the tenant may go and uh, uh, approach another uh, uh, landlord uh, for, uh, for the new house to stay. Uh, okay. So this is a format of rent agreement, a rent agreement in which the two parties, uh, the owner and tenant, but the lease, uh, you know, the parties are called lesser and lessee here, the, here the uh, land owner or house owner and the tenant, uh, the, the party who takes the house for the stay is called tenant and uh, there should be an agreement uh, in the stamp paper is essential uh, before uh, this rent agreement. The agreement has to be constituted by both parties and it is to be signed by uh, both uh, parties. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, it, it contains the, the deposit amount um, has to be kept uh, uh, with the uh, house owner uh, and the maintenance charges uh, would be paid by the tenant to the house owner uh, and also the amount of rent, all this is uh, stated in the rent agreement uh, and uh, uh, you know uh, it contains the furniture etc. I mean with the houses everything has been displayed uh, in the agreement. So and after that it, it was signed by uh, owner and tenant. So here what is cheaper to lease an asset or to buy an asset the financial manager has to decide whether to lease an asset or to buy an asset and for that he should consider the inflows and outflows of both uh, leasing and buying and compare uh, the inflows and outflows and after that he understand that uh, the leasing or uh, 
buying an asset uh, which is uh, which is effective for the company based on the uh, inflows uh, excess of inflows over outflows and uh, while comparing he should consider the present value effect that money received today is more important than money received tomorrow so that effect has to be considered and uh, the interest factor is also considered interest factor should be considered uh, like you know uh, when when a borrowing because it, it, there is an opportunity cost if if we take a bank loan uh, and uh, we have to service the debt so all these factors are considered while comparing the uh, leasing uh, uh, whether to lease or to buy an asset so leasing may be different types you know operating lease financial lease uh, cross border lease uh, leverage lease capital lease uh, you know different types of leasing and uh, out of these the, the two type uh, uh, which is broadly classified into closed end lease and open end lease closed end lease means uh, uh, lease uh, this is a type of lease agreement in which the lessee has no obligation to the leased asset till uh, at the end of the agreement so lessee has uh, has been free in this type of leasing and this is a this is a, uh, one of the version of operating lease in which the lesser has the liability to for liability for the maintenance and the lesser has more obligation than the lessee so closed end lease is also called a true lease uh, walk away lease or a net lease etc so everything is done by everything is in the responsibility of the lesser and the lessee is uh, very free in this type of lease so this is open end lease the open end lease uh, it's opposite of uh, closed end lease in which the lessee has major responsibility you know the rental agreement that obliges the lessee to make a balloon payment at the end of the lease period the payment which will be calculated based on the uh, uh, actual rent which is already been paid by the uh, lessee to the lesser and that amount is uh, i mean that amount sometimes may be lesser than the fair market value of the asset so the residual part means the the lease rent actually paid by the lessee uh, has to be adjusted with the fair market value if the lease rent already paid by the lessee which is less than the fair market value that the uh, the, the different difference amount which is called as residual amount that has to be paid that has to be paid one time by the lessee to the lesser at the end of the lease period so open end leases are also called finance lease leverage lease capital lease all these long term leases are uh, a part of open ended lease but the short term leases are part of the closed end lease so the short term lease or operating lease are the part of closed end lease and the long term lease financial lease capital lease leverage lease are part of the open end lease next is synthetic lease is very uh, very important lease type of lease which is most used most uh, used by the uh, financial companies uh, and uh, uh, this is a very dominating uh, type of uh, lease agreement nowadays uh, so synthetic lease is an off balance sheet lease because the amount which has been not shown on the uh, balance sheet of the uh, lessee or the, the company uh, who takes the lease because it is a long term lease but a, a parent company uh, like you know a big company constitute another entity a special purpose entity which has been specially constituted for the purpose of uh, leasing uh, and this this special purpose entity or the the company created for the purpose of leasing and they purchased the asset or equipment with the help of leverage uh, i mean credit or a loan and these assets are leased back to the parent company so the parent company would be a lessee always and this special purpose entity would be a lesser always and you know the there are advantages to the lessee the amount or the loan taken the leverage taken it is shown on the balance sheet of the special purpose entity only but the parent company is uh, uh, can be relaxed it is the, the liability is not shown on the balance sheet of the parent company because uh, especially the presence of the special purpose entity by uh, also the advantage is the parent company can be able to use the asset for a long term 
So synthetic lease is popular among the publicly traded companies that seek to improve debt equity ratio. So, so you know the debt equity ratio is important. If the debt equity ratio, debt equity ratio is uh, weak, uh, then the, uh, there is a situation in which the other stakeholders and uh, 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 creditors are panic because if the company debt, uh, I mean loan is increasing day by day, so the company is careful about the debt equity ratio. So that that such type of companies can be um, adopted this kind of synthetic lease. So how a synthetic uh, lease work? With a synthetic lease, the special purpose entity treated the lease as a capital lease for the tax purpose uh, and charges depreciation expense against its earning. Essentially, the synthetic lease allows a company to lease an asset to itself. However, the asset does not show up on the balance sheet of the parent company. Instead, the parent company treat it as an operating lease for accounting purpose, recording it as an expense on the income statement. So, a lot of benefits uh, can be uh, available to the parent company because they having have a risk on this uh, lease and they can relax uh, because it is not shown on the balance sheet. The, the liability is not shown on the balance sheet. It is a pure uh, off balance sheet item so that the synthetic lease clicks uh, as compared to other type of leases. Thank you.